Hey, everybody, this is Matt. And this is Greg. And this is Record Mashup. Today, we have a great episode for you. Before, But before we get into that, please check us out on whatever podcast service that you use. That could be CastBox, Google, Apple, YouTube. Also, make sure you send us a comment, like us, let your friends know about us. Email us at recordmashup at gmail.com. For this week, we have the theme of pets or dogs. So we're going to be talking about dogs today. So Matt, what song do you have today? Yeah, so I'm going to do a song by Mo Pitney. He's a country artist and the song is called It's Just a Dog. And we've got a really special guest with us this week. Uh, Greg, we'll circle back to you on your song in a sec, but we're really excited. I know we've, we've only had one guest before, so it's our second episode with a guest. Our good friend Claire, too. who, my wife, I'm sorry, and Kyle. You're right. I, you're all right. You are guest number three, Claire. I am completely sorry uh, about our previous <laughs> guests. Y'all can smack me around later. But anyway, we're really excited to have Claire with us. Uh, she is our good friend uh, that we're in school with, and we hang out with her on Zoom all the time because no one can hang out in person anymore. Um, Claire, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, what's up, Matt? What's up, Greg? Um, nice to meet you guys. My name is Claire. Um, like Matt said, I go to school with Matt and Greg, and we actually got to meet this weekend, or not this weekend, about a year ago at residency at Penn State. Um, and we've worked together in a couple groups as well. Um, I am super excited to be here today and talk about dogs because I love my dog and hopefully he will join the podcast today, maybe if we're lucky. Um, and I work in supply chain and operations and it's super fun. So supply chain is cool. Um, <laughs> It's more that, than just telling people to move boxes. <laughs> it's more than people. Yes, it is more than telling people to move packages. Um, you can hit me up about that if you want to talk about supply chain. Um, Claire, what's my dog, Cooper? Yeah, Cooper. Hey, Cooper. Oh, he is. And this is my finance homework. I'll put that away for right now. Um, so, yeah, I will be talking about my song that is related to dogs, but it has a secret hidden meaning that you guys will find out about in a few minutes. So it's very exciting. And what is the name of your song, Claire? My song is Who Let the Dogs Out by the Baja Men. Yes, Cooper. classic. Uh, yeah, look, there's Col Cooper. Hey, Cooper. Cooper, say hi. Hey, can Ignoring you say hi? No, you can't say hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the, for those that are simply listening cooper is a golden retriever and he is simply adorable so he's okay if Thank i you. if i do say so <laughs> <laughs> uh all right greg what uh what's your song for us this week all right i'll be starting us off today with atomic dog by george clinton so <laughs> this, is a, this is a really great song and music video please go check it out it's a funk song and it's off of George Clinton's first studio album, but his, sorry, his first single stu studio album. He was part of two other bands, Parliament and Funkadelic, that released multiple albums as well. And they had quite a few. He started off in the 1970s and this song came out in the 1980s. So he had a lot of experience. But getting into the song, if you're listening to it, he was obviously high when he wrote it and made it. He actually didn't write it. He walked into the studio and just started talking. So that's why it has the, the kind of flow that it has. And he just starts it off about, this is a story about a famous dog for the dog that chases its tail will be dizzy going into different types of dogs and dancing dogs and counting dogs, funky dogs, all the dogs that you can think of. It's amazing how many dogs that he can actually come up with. I'm actually amazed at a dog that can count. It's like a, a yeah, characterization, you know, like like Clifford the Big Red Dog and <laughs> Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's his dog is Clifford. <laughs> when did Clifford count? In what? I I have no clue. I, I was just Clifford's thinking so of like big. you're asking the wrong questions. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, it just, it seems like a characterization or an animization of the, of a, of a dog. So I don't know. I was just thinking of 
cartoon dog. Clifford is the red. He's the big red dog. He's the right? big red dog. Yeah. Big yeah. red dog. Yeah. Okay. I um, knew it. So getting back into the song, it talks about like the boys when they're out walking the streets. So this song is kind of a euphemism to like guys kind of chasing after girls. And then it gets into the really famous part about it, the chorus, which is the ba wow wow EPO EPA part that you hear in many movies. That's where this phrase kind of comes from. It's been like, it's been in what, the 101 Dalmatians movie, like the, the live action one. It's been a whole bunch of other movies. It's, all, it's also kind of where like Snoop Dogg kind of took it from too. Um, I think that's the version I've, he uses right. that a lot. Yeah, yeah. He, that's the version you got, but that's kind of where he gets it, you know? Yeah. And then the rest of the song is pretty much just the same, like the boys when they're walking the streets. Why must I feel like that? Oh, why must I chase the cat? So boys are the dogs, girls are the cats. So he's just out there chasing girls. And really, it just kind of follows that uh, ly- lyricism throughout the whole time until it says to do the dog catcher, which you, you have to watch the music video to get that. You're not going to get me to do that or anything. I think you should try. <laughs> I was going to say, why don't you give it a shot? <laughs> I'd have to watch the video again to like really get it down. Yeah. But it sounds it, like a great it, Instagram maybe, maybe video. Maybe after my part, I'll put it on mute in the background. I'll watch it. And then at the very end of the episode, I'll give it an attempt. Yeah instagram video that's what i'm that's what i'm hearing. all right yeah it's <laughs> yeah i'll save it for the instagram it's not part of this video you gotta follow us on instagram at record mashup to get it there you go but go go back to the song it keep keeps going through the same lyrics talked about just a walking dog an atomic dog futuristic bow wow rough you know <laughs> just just barking and everything so that is a quick overview of the lyrics of the song but getting into the actual like behind the scenes of the song and everything. So as I said in the beginning, uh, he was obviously high when he wrote this. I watched a video right before this of someone asking him about the how he made the song and like the meaning behind the song. And he he clearly straight up told the audience I was out of my mind when I did that. So he was he was in a high state on something, and that's kind of what gave him his methodology or ideas between his like funk music and how he created a lot of his music for his other two groups that he was part of and how he created like some hits from that. Some other things about this is the music for the song. When he recorded it, he just walked into the state, the studio and kind of ad lib the words to the song. And that's why they kind of just, they're, they're not really, I guess detailed lyrics um yeah well what was that matt yeah no i was gonna say i think there's like some some interesting metaphors going on through this song too just about like comparing i don't know men to dogs and and just i guess to a certain extent the human race on a larger scale um yeah i think that's kind of like a 70s 80s 90s type thing and not really a more today thing like yeah that that relating of that word i i mean i guess you could i, I don't know how much like cat calling and stuff goes on today but like i imagine less today than back then but yeah get for the for the, like the music behind it they had to basically like flip how they were playing the the music for it like the bass and all that stuff that goes into the song they had to like record it separately and then play it over the track and everything just based on how they like wanted to create the sound for it. It's pretty interesting listening to him talk about that, but it, it's something that they can't like recreate basically. Um, and then he, he was also, he's also really into arcade gaming, which kind of gave him the idea for the album that this, song is on it's called computer games so that's kind of just the call out to why he called his album such and then the um the song 
charted at number one on the hip hop charts. And what was it? Number it was number one on another chart. I'm yeah, the US R and B. Um, it did it didn't make it into the hot one hundred though. Yeah, it made ninety four on the UK singles chart. One on the back then it was the hot black singles chart, but now the hot R and B and hip hop songs, and then one on the bubbling under hot one hundred. Yeah, what I thought was interesting, um, it, I don't know if we've had any we any songs that were quite like this. I know we've had a few that have you know hit the charts multiple times over various decades and so forth. Yeah, but I read about this one that it didn't actually when it was first released it like had like hardly any radio play it like it wasn't until like the the song actually started selling i guess on you know the record stores and so forth that it actually started getting played on the radio so it was kind of like a reverse effect um yeah, and that i saw that that was because of like his basically how people perceived him yeah he had a bad reputation and stuff so radio stations didn't want to play him yeah I just I thought that was kind of an interesting twist. You know, normally it's you know you songs are released on the radio and then people go buy the albums. Here it was kind of the opposite um, <laughs> yeah. sequence of events. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. For, well, for that song, th those are the major hits. Uh, I also calling back to Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg sampled this on his first single uh, called "What's My Name," and he just changed the words from "Atomic Dog" to "Snoop Doggy Dog." So. Uh, Snoop Dogg was a big fan of him so he, he used that for himself and then the last thing there was a copyright lawsuit that they did have and they cited a lot of things saying that the biggest part of the song was the ba wow 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 UPO UPA part which was very similar to the other um, to what they were suing for Which, but, let's be real, that's the part everybody remembers. It's the only part I recognize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the music video is amazing, though. It's so 80s. It is just so 80s. Yeah, I'm I'm fully expecting to see that Instagram video, Greg. Just saying. Uh, I'll, I'll try and record it. I'll see if my wife can just record me, or I'll use my webcam here to record yeah. myself. So be sure to check out our Instagram I don't know. Either if before you don't or after. See it up is... there, it's because I hurt myself doing it, probably. <laughs> Which I don't know how I will, but yeah. that is what it is. Uh, Claire and Matt, did you guys have anything to input into my song? I, I covered all the big things at once. Yeah. You covered the big stuff. It just, it, you know, it makes me think of movies. Yeah. yeah. But I think, yeah, for me, I, I think of it from the Scooby-Doo movie. Um, I think it's the real life version of Scooby-Doo. I think it's like when they're going on the island or they're on the island. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I remember it from. <laughs> yeah, that's the first one. <laughs> if you want to know the songs and stuff that's been in, uh, Wikipedia has 102 Dalmatian, Rugrats Go Wild, Hotel for Dogs, The Shaggy Dog, Finn on the Fly, Legally Blonde 2, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Boomerang, Scooby-Doo, the first live action movie, Menace to Society, and the Trolls World Tour animated movie video. Yep. And it also appeared in a 2019 E-Trade commercial. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. I remember that commercial, actually. So... <laughs> Hey, well, hey, catchy tunes like that sell. What can you say? Yeah. There's a there's a marketing lesson in there somewhere. <laughs> Matt, would you like to jump into your song then? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. All right. So uh we're gonna we're gonna take a depressive tone here. Um or a, a more somber tone, I suppose. Um but yeah, so so my song is uh um It's just a dog by Mo Pitney. Uh, if you don't know who Mo Pitney is, he is a country music artist, um, really young. I think he's actually younger than all of us. Um, like he's in like his mid twenties. Um, so fairly new, but he's really kind of more classic country. He's not kind of new style country. Although I will say he has a new single out right now that I think is awesome. But anyway, um, getting off track here. So this is a song off of his actually his debut album, uh, which was titled Behind This Guitar. 
Uh, the album was actually released on October 7th, 2016 with Curb Records. Um, although he had actually had this song come out uh, the previous summer in the summer of 2015. It's a song that he wrote along with uh, two, two gentlemen by the name of Jimmy Melton and Dave Turnbull. And in many, many interviews that, that Mo has done about the song, he, he always describes the song as uh, getting a glimpse into his life and, and what, what you know, his experiences in life have been, even though it's not a song explicitly about him. And I think that that's kind of reflective. And as we as we dig into the, the lyrics here, you, you probably start to understand why. Uh, so the song basically is a song that really kind of tells a, a story. It tells this story of uh, from 10 years ago, this guy who's driving home in the rain in his pickup truck. He sees a dog. It's, you know, shivering or whatever, presumably on the side of the road. And he says himself, you know, it's just a dog, you know, but but he still pulls over and to pick up this this dog takes it home eventually adopts it and over the course of the, the rest of the song he really starts to show you this connection that he builds with his dog that that he picked up on the side of the road uh he, he talks about you know chews up his shoes digs holes in the yard kind of reminds me did you guys ever see marley and me oh i can't even talk about marley and me it's too upsetting it it's a Ugh. terribly Subject sad song change. I know, but like I, I can't help but think that this is like the song equivalent to that movie, right? So like that's a good comparison. Yeah, so like the, the whole song, he's sitting there talking about like how he builds this strong connection with his dog. And the movie Marley and Me, if you've never seen it, they 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 show you how they build this strong connection with their dog, and you know they go through all these trials and tribulations, you know, trying to train the dog and so forth. And that's kind of what in the middle part of the song, that's what he's he's talking about. Um, he talks about how the dog gets hit by a car and he spends half of his savings just to save it because it's clearly, you know, he's come to love it. And, you know, fast forward to, to kind of the bridge and the outro. He, he summarizes the song by talking about how he goes fishing. It's, you know, everything about the day is perfect. The, the fish are hidden, you know, it's sunny, it's, you know, no wind. It's just, you know, gorgeous day until he starts to leave. And he, he realizes and he pulls over with tears in his eyes because um, he realizes that his dog's not with him and hasn't been since last Sunday. So in other words, he's saying that his dog died. And, and he, he just hit the last line is she was just a dog. Right. And which is, you know, reflecting back to that first verse, you know, when he was deciding to pick her up on the side of the road, you know, why am I going to stop? It's just a dog. Um, and I just, this song gets me every time I listen to it, I love it. It's so the, the story and the arch to it, the story, the songwriting is just absolutely phenomenal and the story that it tells. And um, it's not a song that got, you know, any, you know, accolades. It didn't even chart, um, you know, in the country charts or anything, but it's just classic country, great storytelling. And for anyone that's had a dog, this, this, this song will really pull at your heartstrings. Um and I think that that's kind of this song's legacy is just the the ability um, for it to 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 really to really hit home. <laughs> um, I guess is how you could say it. Um, and it's told in four minutes, so you know if you want a good story, give this song a listen. Um, I think this song applies to anyone with a pet, really. Yeah, I know, and she is not in here at the moment, but you know it. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, Greg. Anyone that has a pet, you know, it just you, you realize how much you come to love them. And um, unfortunately, once you do get to that point in life, and um, that's when it really hits the hardest, the, the worst. Um, so hold your hold your pet closer. That's all I have to say. Yeah, you, <laughs> you said there there's the lyric about like he'll, he'll like spend any amount of money or whatever it was to take care of the dog. Yeah. And, uh, my, my last cat like the last year we owned her um we spent about a thousand a month on her oh my gosh yeah, yeah. but but you'd do it again wouldn't you yeah probably i don't know my <laughs> cat kind of pisses me off because it well no my cat right now i got one that pees on the floor all the time luckily it's in the basement now and we don't give a shit about that but we my other about cat that though huh it's a potty training issue we gotta just teach her how to like pee in the toilet no she's just a dick <laughs> 
<laughs> like she knows how to use the litter box. She just chooses not to sometimes. She's just like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. But you um, still love her. Yeah, I, I like that one. The other one, that so that's my wife's cat, I say. The other one is my cat. But that, my cat fucking wakes me up at 5.30 every day, like scratching my face, like, hey, it's time to eat, bro. Like, no, it's not. You got till six o'clock before I actually feed you. And then she's like, no, I'm just going to keep clawing you and biting you until you wake up. So that's my morning. Yeah. Uh, there's Cooper again. There's Cooper. Uh, Cooper. I, I imagine hey. Cooper doesn't claw you and bite you to wake you up in the morning. Uh, he does not. No, Cooper is actually very lazy and will sleep until I wake him up. Um, so usually I wake him up in the morning, but he sleeps, you know, if uninterrupted, he'll sleep till like 10 30, 11. He's very lazy. Mm. Um, he does not paw at me or scratch at me to wake him up. Um, sometimes he'll like throw paw, but he just, he knows high five. So he's just trying to give you a high five. Uh, yeah. But uh, one, yeah. one last thing I was going to say about this song. Sorry, shifting back. Um, no. I, you know, I, there's not really, any as i said with this long in chart but on a personal note uh my wife and i when we were on our honeymoon we actually we went part of our trip our honeymoon we went to nashville and we went to the grand Ole opry and we actually saw mo pitney per well i don't know if he performed this song but he performed this and it was the same um weekend that he was debuting this album that the song was on so the Grand Ole Opry performance that we saw was kind of like his debut uh, or live debut of the album. Um, he didn't go through the whole album. So I really, and I really don't remember if he performed this song or not, but, <laughs> um, but uh, still kind of a cool story that, that we got to see kind of the debut live debut of, of the album that this song was off of. So nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. I didn't know you went to Nashville for your hunting. I was thinking you went to Australia or was that just another trip you guys took? Am I confusing them? Yeah, no, that was just a vacation we took uh, last year. Uh, and when did we get married? My wife's going to kill me I'm thinking about this. Four years ago? No, hmm. five years ago now. Oh. <laughs> um, no, four years ago. Yeah, 2016. Um, Kelly, don't listen to this. <laughs> She's probably not anyways. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, so four years ago, we, we spent half our honeymoon in the, the Smokies, Great Smoky Mountains, and then the, the other half in Nashville. So. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. If you've never been to Nashville, even if you don't like country music, Nashville is one of the coolest cities I have ever been to. Um, and I've been to quite a few cities. I absolutely love Nashville. It's such a fun city. Great food, too, there. Some amazing food. Real great food. Yeah. So that's your travel tip of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there since I was in college. It's been a very well I went there for a conference once but we didn't do anything like we never got to leave the hotel because we were in meetings all day so mm. I saw Hyatt of Nashville it was nice but you know it's just like any other one yeah but, the thing I love about Nashville it you know it is the country music capital of the world or whatever but like you can find any genre of music there um in all the clubs and everything I mean just you go down uh Broadway I think is the I think that's the name of the street um, yep. which is like where it's just like all the honky tonks and, and bars and everything are, but you just go into any, any, any restaurant and yeah, you, most of them are playing country, but there's some, like, I remember we, the first place we went to was a place called like the Acme feed and seed or something. And like, they're playing like jazz music and it was, it was great. Like food yeah. was good. Like the music and, it, and it's like in all these places, you know, we're really talking about Nashville, but <laughs> Like all these places, it's like a different bar and a different stage on every floor of the building. And it's like, you could, you know, like one floor, you got country music, the floor above they're playing like classic rock, like the floor above that they're playing, I don't know, just like acoustic or something. It's just, it's, it's awesome. I highly love, highly recommend Nashville. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox now. That was, that was a good Nashville plug though. You know, it's a good, <laughs> only if only they sponsored the podcast because you just gave them yeah. like a 60 second plug. Exactly. Um, that's our sponsor. Like a million viewers right there. Yeah. That's our non sponsor sponsor of the day. <laughs> we sponsor the, the, the city, city of Nashville. The city of Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. All right. Enough about Nashville. Uh, Claire. Matt. Tell us all about who let the dogs out. I need to know the answer. Who let them out? 
Well, that's the thing. We're still not clear on who actually let them out, but there appears to be a couple of hidden meanings about this song. Um, so, you know, anyone in our age group, I remember this song from like middle school dances being played. Um, and the middle school that I went to, the uh, mascot was the bears. So I remember they printed off shirts for us that said like, who let the bears out? And probably the teachers didn't look up like what the song really meant. So they may not have printed it if they knew. Um, but song came out early 2000, um, so in the summer. And it was also in one of the Rugrats movies, um, which made it very popular as well to the Rugrats in Paris. Um, I was a little old for the Rugrats, but do know who they are. Um, and real big song in the UK, as well as Australia and New Zealand and made it to the top 40 in the US. Um, so if you've ever seen the music video, you see, you know, a bunch of guys walking around, you see various dog breeds there. And then you also see some women as well. Um, and so ultimately, you know, the song has maybe a little bit more of feminist undertones that people didn't really think about because people just think about you know dogs walking around and like the image in your mind at least my mind is like just dogs walking the street um but ultimately hidden meaning and kind of what they meant about it as they wrote it and as they sang it it's a little bit more about uh, man bashing um trying to phrase it correctly but you know basically talking about you know men cat calling women as Greg kind of mentioned um, and then the women respond by calling the men who are calling out to them dogs and who let the men out of their houses places of work whatever whatever it may be um, so it's, just, it's an interesting take on it for sure especially because um, you know a, female, one of the biggest female insults is, you know, what you call a female dog. So it's interesting they took it to insulting men here, um, especially a song that was sung by men. Um, so, you know, interesting enough there. Um, that being said, you know, a lot of people didn't know that when the song came out. Um, and, you know, it was just a catchy song. Obviously, they were using it in the Rugrats movie and on my uh, middle school t-shirts. So, you know, <laughs> clearly not really thinking as much about men catcalling women. Um, that being said, Greg made the point earlier about catcalling and I'm here to tell you that in the age of COVID, it does not exist or just nobody does it to me. So I'm not sure which that is, um, open to feedback on that as well, but you know. Definitely it's COVID. Claire I, Sigal, know. everyone, she's looking for, she's yeah. looking for <laughs> on our podcast. That, that is, that is false. Cat call all you want. Yeah, that is false. Send, send the cat calls. Um, I prefer them like in the form of like um, memes, gifts, uh, text messages, but you know, whatever. Uh, feel Probably free to cat victory. call as well. I definitely look great walking down the street in my coat that makes me weigh like a million pounds and full mask. And like, all you can see is like one inch right here. So it's a good look for me personally. Um, definitely brings all the men out. Um, and we didn't mention this earlier, but I am in Chicago where today it is uh, five degrees Fahrenheit. So it is so cold. Is that before so the wind chill? Uh, that's before the wind chill. That's just yeah, what's like the real feel. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, I don't want to look. Um, so there is no cat calling, but I guess feel free to contradict me. Um, you know, so going back to that, this song, <laughs> Who Let the Dogs Out, also was used by a bunch of different sports teams. Um, the Saints used them, and then they always used it a lot at, oddly enough, Mississippi State University made it um, intro to a lot of their football games, which is interesting. Um, and Mississippi State, while I am not super familiar with them, as I am a Big Ten fan, uh, I don't even, what conference is Mississippi State even in? I don't I even think know. That's, I'm pretty sure that's Southeast. SEC. Yeah, I think uh, it's yeah, SEC. Yeah. Okay. So, but their mascot is the Bulldogs. So, you know, made sense to have a song about dogs. Um, they also used it in this for um, New Orleans Saints and the Mariners, um, who are based in Chicago, or not Chicago, I'm sorry, Seattle. So, you know, it's a really catchy song. Um, even still, 20 years after it was released, I still have it on a few various 
Spotify playlists. Um, and, you know, you may be asking yourself what happened to the Baja men. Did they bring out, you know, did they have any other songs after this? Did anything really become of them? And um, yeah, the answer is no. Uh, they haven't really done <laughs> much since then. Um, that, so Who Let the Dogs Out was really their biggest and only break back in 2000. They released a couple other albums after that, um, but none of them ever reached above like number 60 on the charts. And last one hit song, wonder. Yeah, one hit wonder with Who Let the Dogs Out. Um, they did release a new album that was just like a digital download. So they didn't even make a CD in like 2015. Um, and we haven't heard from them since. Um, so that's the story with Who Let the Dogs Out and Baja Men. Um, I will mention as well, too, they have been featured in, they were on the movie Shrek. Um, and then they used Who Let the Dogs Out in The Hangover as nice. well. Um, I was kind of... That, you know, real one hit wonder. And if you ever hear the song, like you hear like dogs barking, like in the backgrounds, they really do incorporate the dogs. Um, I don't, I can't think of what kind of dogs that were in the music video now that I'm thinking back and I should have watched it in preparing for this. They um, reference pit bulls. So it wasn't a pit They do reference pit bulls. Um, and I thought about picking like a pit bull song for this podcast, just because like, you know, pit bull and, you know, we're talking about dogs, but none of his songs are about dogs. So I just couldn't make the connection just based off yeah, of but like, he's He's Mr. Worldwide or whatever. Mr. Not, he's not. Well, he, he was, yeah, he's Mr. Worldwide now, but he was yeah. Mr. 305. And now <laughs> he's, you know, we know too much about Pitbull. He looks much like better him. with his sunglasses on. I would agree. He should keep those right. on indefinitely. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm, I'm checking the video now. It's like it's all kinds of dogs. It's got, I think there was a Pitbull in there. There's even a, like a little Chihuahua. Okay. Um, bulldog. I think I think it's an appropriate song. Yeah. So a, fi- a fine sampling of all dog breeds is what you're telling yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Dog, it's dog got breeds. diversity. Yeah. Diversity. Yeah. Yes. That's very yes. important. For for you Much businesses out there, you want to incorporate diversity. Take take notes from the Baja men. <laughs> they got a diverse list of dogs. Yeah. You need to promote an all inclusive environment that is open to all. So they were really, when you think about it in that sense, very ahead of their time because that was not as big of a theme in the 2000s. But in 2021, diversity and inclusion are the thing. Yeah, chihuahuas yeah. and pit bulls getting along together. <sighs> Who would have thought yeah. they need what they need is like a great Dane or like some like some other like really big dog, like a Mastiff or what are other big dog? I don't know. I don't know my big um, dog. Oh, uh, what's the Beethoven dog? Oh, uh, um, know that movie Beethoven. Yeah. yeah. What is yeah. the Beethoven dog? Is it it's a Bernie's mountain dog? No, that's not it. I don't know. Malamutes okay. are big. Malamutes are big. What is um yeah, I'm trying to look it up. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what the Saint Bernard. Are. Oh, Saint Bernard. Saint Bernard. There we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that was a cute movie. It was a good movie. I like that movie, but the best animal movie I think is Homeward Bound. And then yeah. Homeward, but I remember the issue Homeward with Homeward Bound, Bound is they didn't treat the animals good on set. Really? I, I didn't read know that, that. I read that too, and it made me mad. Yeah, they didn't treat the animals well. And I remember as a kid being pissed that they made a second movie because I was like, how stupid is this family? They keep losing their pets. Like once you lose them once, don't lose them again. And they managed to do it again. <laughs> so. Well, it's just like how stupid is Home Alone? How do you lose your son that many times? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that is a true story. How so. do you, like they needed to put that kid on a leash and like make sure he got his ass on the plane and they didn't they still let him run through you know the airport whatever I, I do i do love watching that movie and just seeing like how different airports are now from when that movie was filmed oh my god it was filmed at o'hare and that was was still yeah it still looks like o'hare it looks just like it uh, that is a very accurate picture of O'Hare the still. Security is one hundred percent different, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I was referring to as a security. Well, you used aspect. to be able to just like walk on a plane, and now like every time I go on a plane, like I get like the pat down, and I have pre-checked, and they don't care. I get because I have like I have an earring up here, and this always sets off the thing, and then I have to go behind like the special 
whatever it is, like special little wall and get the pat down, make sure, you know, I don't have bombs or anything. So that's always. Is it easier to just take out the earring? Um, well, I don't actually know how to take it out. We can talk about that at another time, but like, I, I don't know how to get it out because like I spin the ball. <laughs> Sounds like a sanitary in. problem, but yeah, we could talk about that. Like, Yeah, I haven't taken this earring out since I was like 17 years old. Um, yeah, don't really, I mean, it's like clean and stuff, but yeah, I don't know how to take it out. Um, or yeah, I would have considered okay. that. Maybe it's Thanks, just one No, I think it's one of those permanent things, so. So what, we referenced the, we've referenced a ton of movies what is what is y'all's favorite movie i know we're a music podcast but i don't care what is, what is y'all's favorite movie about pets or animals oh man favorite there's a lot movie. of good ones out there there are a lot of good ones i like air bud um i'm partial to it because that's a happy retriever. that's a happy one i don't yeah, like marley like, and me because it's no. sad yeah i literally it's a good I, movie I can't but. talk about Marley and me. It's See, I grew of- up, I grew up my favorite movie and it's almost kind of the same storyline. So there's a, I don't know, there's a weird trend here, but I loved Old Yeller. I don't know if you guys ever saw that I movie. I liked Old Yeller. Dude, it, yeah. it, was, <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, it's so sad, but it's such a great it's film. So sad. <laughs> what about um, Lassie? That's a classic. Yeah, good one. L- Lassie. All Dogs Holly. Go to Heaven. Yep. Oh, all dogs go to heaven. Yes, I've seen that one. I also how like you, Lady in the Tramp. How Tramp's. do you feel about like the newer ones, like uh, Pets, Secret Life I, of Pets, and stuff? I love the Secret Life of Pets. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I've not seen the Secret Life of Pets. Should it's I good. put it Should on the list? That. It's it's okay. good. Yeah. That okay. honestly, like a lot of those like movies, like, I also like like Inside Out. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that one. Oh, That's is that Kevin? Uh, what's his name? Yeah, I've seen that movie. It's like That's a Disney. Movie. It's a Pixar yeah. movie. Yeah, it's not yeah. that old. It's like two or I, three years old. It feels like a long time ago. I've aged Ooh. about fifteen years since. Here's another. Here's another good dog movie. Fox and the Hound. Oh uh, yeah, good call. Good oh call. yeah. Did you know foxes I, are canines and they're related to dogs? So it's a dog movie. I can see that. I'll well, take there's it. Also, two dogs. I'll, there's also dogs. I'll roll with it. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. guys, this has been fun uh claire i am so Always thankful is. that you were able to join us and um, sadly cooper didn't join us for too long cooper come here hey come here can you come here come say hi say hi to Matt and greg up, up. we're gonna try to get him to say goodbye come on up up <gasps> say goodbye say goodbye uh, cooper. So cooper was fun cooper. does cooper, was cooper have does cooper have anything he wants to plug um no plugs for cooper you can follow him on instagram if you want he is um coopers.golden.life um but i need to let you guys all know it is actually me who runs the instagram page it is not cooper he doesn't have thumbs and he cannot speak so wait are you serious i know it's it's a surprise as well (laughs) it's Um, destroying my world right now figuring that out i know well, I think, you know, there actually are a few people who genuinely believe they're talking to the dog. And because of that, I never break character. But if you slide into the DMs, I will break character in DMs. But that's, I do not break them in poster stories. That's the same that I do with my uh, with my cats. Yeah. I, and- I have committed to that dog personality. So. Greg, what is, what is your cat's Instagram handle? So people it's can follow Megs it. and Phoebe. Megs is M E G S. There's no spaces in between it. So it's just Megs and Phoebe. And then Phoebe is spelled P H O E B E. I would also like to be clear it's Cooper's plural dot golden dot life, like dot like period, oh, period. not yeah. dot spelled out. Um, I'll, I'll, Sorry, we'll throw it into the, we'll throw it onto the video as well as we'll throw in the, uh, info about the video and the podcast and everything so that you guys can all find that if you do want to enjoy life and take a look at some dogs and cats and stuff yeah absolutely it was fun guys yeah do do you you guys have anything else to throw out there i don't think so i appreciate everyone tuning in and listening and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe you can subscribe at google Apple, 
Castbox, any other podcast service that you like to use. We also have our YouTube if you want to watch our beautiful faces on here and see Cooper in this amazing episode. And you can also leave us comments, likes, and shoot us an email at recordmashup at gmail.com to let us know what you thought of everything. Yeah. And for Great. next week, we have the theme of love. And my song will be If I Ain't, if I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. Matt, where are you going to have for us? I'm going to take on the, the Whitney Houston slash Dolly Parton classic of I Will Always Love You. I haven't decided which one. I don't know. It's basically the same song. but It is the same song, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> sung by different people <laughs> yeah pick whatever artist pick whichever artist version you prefer we'll we'll probably discuss but <laughs> all right and with that appreciate it have a good day everyone Bye. Thanks, guys. see you later